Foreign Minister Roy Shankar, Defense Minister Singh, I am delighted to join my friend, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, in uh, welcoming you to Washington, and especially grateful for the chance to return the incredibly warm hospitality that uh, you showed me when I visited uh, New Delhi in, in July. Uh, this meeting today marked the fourth U.S.-India 2 plus 2 ministerial dialogue. It built upon the productive meeting last September between President uh, between Prime Minister Modi and President Biden, uh, as well as the conversation that they had by video today, uh, and on the strong partnership our two countries have developed across nearly 75 years of diplomatic relations. As the world's largest democracy and oldest democracy, we work together every day to deliver opportunity, security, freedom, and dignity to our peoples. Uh, we're working closely to combat the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, scientists and institutions across our countries are developing and producing safe and effective COVID-19 vaccines together. We're working through the Quad Vaccine Partnership with our colleagues in Australia and Japan to make these vaccines available throughout the Indo-Pacific. As of today, Quad partners have collectively provided more than 500 million vaccine doses. We're rapidly expanding production to make more at the Biological E facility in India. We're standing together for our shared commitment to uphold a free, rules-based international order that safeguards sovereignty, territorial integrity, and independence. Today, we reaffirmed our commitment to promoting regional stability, the rule of law, the peaceful resolution of disputes, and to expanding our strategic partnership with ASEAN. Russia's war against Ukraine is an attack on Ukraine's people. It's also an attack on that rules-based order that we both adhere to and defend. The United States will continue to increase our support to the government and people of Ukraine and call on other nations to do the same, just as we call on all nations to condemn Moscow's increasingly brutal actions. Russia's aggression stands in stark contrast to the vision that the United States and India share for a free and open Indo-Pacific. And Russia's actions are having a profound impact, not just in Europe uh, and in Ukraine, but around the world. For example, causing food insecurity and rising prices. Ukraine's farmers have been forced to flee or to fight as Russian troops intentionally destroy farmland and equipment and prevent Ukraine from exporting their wheat through Black Sea ports. Uh, our countries are working together to try to bring more food to world markets as well as to the World Food Program. And the United States is also focused on securing more funding for the World Food Program and the UN Food and Agriculture Organization and producing more fertilizer so that we can help others sustain crop yields in the future. We also discussed our goal of driving inclusive economic growth, both for our countries and across the region. Uh, India and the United States already trade to the tune of more than $150 billion each year. But we're deepening that relationship by restarting the U.S.-India Commercial Dialogue and the U.S.-India CEO Forum later this year, where our private sector partners can offer recommendations to strengthen even more our trade and investment relationship. Uh, in the video meeting that they held earlier today, Prime Minister Modi welcomed President Biden's Indo-Pacific Economic Framework Initiative. It can allow us to increase our collaboration across more issues, including digital trade, supply chain resilience, infrastructure, and tax policy. And our countries are working together to tackle the climate crisis. The United States is supporting India's ambitious COP26 clean energy commitments by investing in renewable energy projects and mobilizing private sector financing. We also share a commitment to our democratic values, such as protecting human rights. We regularly engage with our Indian partners on these shared values, and to that end, we're monitoring some recent concerning developments in India, including a rise in human rights abuses by some government, police, and prison officials. In addition to all of these critical issues, uh, I'm pleased that we're increasing cooperation in a number of other key areas, which we focused on today. We're deepening our defense ties, which I know Secretary Austin uh, will speak to. We're expanding our cooperation on development around the world, uh, particularly in Asia and Africa, by working together to carry out disaster relief as well as clean energy and climate smart agricultural projects. And we're increasing people to people ties, which are really at the heart of the entire relationship. We're very lucky in the United States to be home to some 4 million Indian Americans as well as 200,000 Indians studying in our universities. Uh, we have a working group on education uh, and skill training that we formed today that will increase that number by bringing institutions of the United States and India together to develop new joint research and exchange programs. We look forward to welcoming 
more Indian students and scholars into our communities. Uh, we're focusing, among other things, on STEM education. I think this is an area of tremendous potential going forward. Uh, let me just say in conclusion that very soon after our country's established diplomatic relations, some 75 years ago, Prime Minister Nehru came to visit the United States. Uh, President Truman met him on the tarmac of the airport. Um, and Prime Minister Nehru noted the importance of the moment, saying, and I quote, I trust that these two republics of the Western world and the Eastern world will find many ways of working together in friendly and fruitful cooperation to our mutual advantage and for the good of humanity. So for nearly 75 years, we've done just that. And I'm grateful to our partners for making it possible for that friendly and fruitful cooperation to continue and to deepen. And with that, I hand it over to Foreign Minister Jaishankar. Are we going to Lloyd? Sorry. Let me go to Lloyd first. Thanks, Secretary, Secretary of Defense. Well, Secretary Blinken, Minister Singh, Minister Jaishankar, it's great to be here with you for this fourth U.S.-India 2 plus 2 ministerial dialogue. As my friend uh, Secretary Blinken has rightly noted, we're meeting at an important moment in our partnership. It's been nearly two decades since we signed our first bilateral defense framework, and our partnership has grown immensely ever since. Today's meeting shows that we're working together to build one of the most consequential partnerships of our time. We've made important commitments today that will drive technological innovation and cooperation in emerging defense domains, including space and cyberspace. For example, we're committed to launching new defense space exchanges later this year between our Space Command and India's Defense Space Agency. And I'm pleased to announce that just a few moments ago, we signed a bilateral space situational awareness arrangement. And this will support greater information sharing and cooperation in space. We're also deepening our cooperation in cyberspace, including through training and exercises later this year. And we're expanding our information sharing partnership across all warfighting domains. And meanwhile, our defense trade and technology cooperation continues to grow. We recently concluded an agreement to work together on air-launched unmanned aerial vehicles through our Defense Technology and Trade Initiative. And today we agreed to launch new supply chain cooperation measures that will let us more swiftly support each other's priority defense, defense requirements. India continues to acquire key U.S. defense platforms and that is forging important new ties between our defense industrial bases. We're doing all this because the United States supports India as a defense industry leader, leader in the Indo-Pacific and a net provider of security in the region. And we all understand the challenges that we face there. The People's Republic of China is seeking to refashion the region and the international system more broadly in ways that serve its interests. And so I'm pleased that we've identified new opportunities to extend the operational reach of our militaries and to coordinate more closely together across the expanse of the Indo-Pacific. We welcome the Indian Navy's decision to join the Combined Maritime Forces Bahrain. Bahrain. And we've also committed to more high-end exercises together. Last summer, the Theodore Roosevelt Carrier Strike Group conducted the first ever combined anti-submarine warfare and air exercise with the Indian Navy and Air Force. And we're looking forward to more of this sort of cooperation as we expand the scope and the complexity of Tiger Triumph, which is our annual major tri-service exercise. And finally, we made commitments today to reinforce our ties with like-minded countries, including Japan, Australia, and our European allies and partners. Take, for example, the Quad's new, newly launched humanitarian assistance and disaster relief mechanism, 
which will bring together our defense and civil disaster and civilian disaster relief agencies to ensure that the Indo-Pacific is better prepared for future crises. Now, as two of the world's largest democracies, the United States and India are linked by more than our common interests. We're bound by our shared values and commitments, including ensuring that the Indo-Pacific stays on a path defined by the rule of law and freedom of the seas and respect for territorial integrity of sovereign states. Today's 2 plus 2 ministerial reflects our deep commitment to maintaining open channels of communication on a range of challenging issues. As strategic threats converge, especially following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, it is more important than ever that we stand together to defend our shared values and to preserve the international rules-based order. And so I believe that the investments that we've made together today will help to ensure that our shared vision of a secure, open, and prosperous Indo-Pacific region thrives in the decades ahead. Ministers, thank you for your partnership and for your leadership as we work together to build that future. It's great to have you with us, here with us, so thank you very much. Madam Minister Singh. Yeah. Secretary Austin, Secretary Blinken, Dr. Jayashankarji, members of press, ladies and gentlemen. My secretaries or unke delegation or unke staff, ke saath jo humare behtareen interactions huye hain, uske liye mein unko dhanyavad deta hoon. Mein unhe tahe dil se, humare bilateral relations ko lekar commitment ke liye bhi, mein unki apne... Very uh, appreciative of uh, their comments. In the past, it shows that our relationships have expanded in scale. And we have had very meaningful talks this morning. It will help in the momentum and in also expanding and taking it forward. Both, of, both the nations are common and complementary. And we have shared goals which we would like to achieve. And we also have the shared will to achieve it. We have tried to see that uh, we, will, we have talked on very many different aspects. And it's a very unique thing that as uh, two big democracies of the world, we've had conversation on all the issues and our views converge on each. And we hope to have a free, open, and inclusive rule-based order, which is a common vision that is shared by both the nations. Our partnership is based on Indo-Pacific, Pacific, and we want to create peace and prosperity in the Indo-Pacific region. During the meeting, we also discussed about our neighbors, and we tried to make sure that our assessment is also shared. During this talk, we have talked about counterterrorism and talk about how this has been used against India. During our comprehensive engagement, we have had very comprehensive results, some of which are as follows, which would like to talk. The Department of Space and U.S. Department of Defense have space situational awareness agreement, which has been fulfilled. And in the times to come, Defense Space and Defense Artificial Intelligence Agreement. Third, many other initiatives and agreements, which are still in the discussion phase. They've had very good progress. The military scope and also to increase the depth of it, and we've had unanimity on that. Do, do, even after the pandemic, we've seen very big expansion between our military to military exercises, and we are happy that the maritime force in Bahrain has been, has been joined as an associated force. This shows that in the Western region, it will make it more stronger. We are also happy with the COMCASA and BECA implementation. 
and we are working towards it in the defense cyber and special forces field also we would like to increase the forces lemoa and sdr under these two exercises we've tried to expand the scope of logistics both the countries are trying that with the closer engagement of the forces we are fully working technology initiatives also we want to take speedy decisions and implementation and for that the processing and procurement review will be done this is what was decided today i have talk to american uh, companies for make in india and aerospace and world program i've invited them for these programs we are talking to us companies for co development and co production we're proposing it to them we have asked the us companies to work in the up and tamil nadu corridor and invest in that area during the hard time of uh, pandemic United States have given us a lot of support and on this occasion we express our deep appreciation for that and during this time I would like to thank Dr Secretary Blinken and Secretary Austin and would like to thank them for the leadership today's uh, leadership meeting and the 2 plus 2 meeting shows that we are this was an important event to strengthen the relationship between the two nations and in the areas of mutual interest also i would like to say that we would support for better work and better contribution we want that global access should be given and peace and uh, security should be maintained i would like to once again thank secretary blinken and secretary austin and would like to thank them for the support in strengthening us india relationships i have talked to both the the secretaries to i have invited them to india for the next 2 plus 2 ministerial dialogue in india thank you Secretary Blinken, Secretary Austin, Raksha Mantri. It's a great pleasure to meet all of you at the conclusion of a productive and substantive two plus. Meet of our leaders, uh, and we also met departmentally. These meetings are taking place at a time when the global order is facing multiple challenges and stresses obviously a good part of my meeting with secretary blinken in the morning uh, went to the ongoing conflict in ukraine that has many ramifications even countries far away are worrying about energy security food security commodities prices and logistics disruption now this comes on top of the consequences of the covid-19 pandemic with which the world has been struggling for the last 2 years quite apart from public health concerns and its economic impact uh, this has raised awareness about the need for reliable and resilient supply chains autonomously the nature of globalization and the usage of technology has brought to fore concerns of trust and transparency how to ensure a free open and inclusive indo pacific was also on our agenda today we spoke of developments in and around afghanistan that have made their ripples felt well beyond our conversations also covered recent happenings in the indian subcontinent strategic partnerships like those between india and the united states are built through shared interests common values and constant nurturing it is natural that each of us will bring to the relationship our particular perspectives experiences and priorities 
But when there is a mutual appreciation of the significance of our ties, there is also a desire to better understand each other's thinking. Our dialogue today, I believe, has helped in that regard. The report card of our bilateral cooperation is an impressive one. Defense Minister has already spoken of the great strides made in the field of defense and security. We also partner closely in counterterrorism and maritime security, making the world a much safer place. The integrated perspective that we brought to bear in this 2 plus 2 format only underlines the gains made in different domains in recent times. The economic side of the story is particularly significant. Both trade and investment are steadily growing. We have had discussions today on both of them, as also on connectivity, infrastructure, digital issues, climate action, and energy. Our shared activities in space, science and technology, and health are also noteworthy. We see our cooperation as having a larger relevance for the Indo-Pacific. The bedrock of our relationship, as you would all agree, is its human element. It could be the students who come to universities, the flow of talent that defines our knowledge partnership, or indeed the technology and business relationships which promote innovation. They're all examples of the human bridge that connects our societies so uniquely. I look forward to highlighting this aspect tomorrow at an event in Harvard University uh, where I would have the pleasure of uh, speaking along with Secretary Blinken. In a changing world, uh, India-US ties have not only kept pace, but actually emerged as a major contributor to global peace, stability, and prosperity. This is not just the weight of our expanding partnership, but also the impact it makes on addressing global issues. Our vaccine cooperation can enhance its affordability and accessibility. Our B2B and G2G dealings can contribute to better connectivity and reliable supply chains. Our climate collaboration is underlined by the United States joining the International Solar Alliance and co-chairing the Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure. Challenges in the Indo-Pacific have also been a particular focus of our discussions. We appreciate the attention and energy devoted by the United States to the Quad. Its elevation and intensification in the last year benefits the entire Indo-Pacific. Indeed, the Quad has emerged as a powerful force of global good. So let me sum up our discussions in three broad points. One, it has helped us today to strategize on mitigating the volatility and unpredictability that the world is currently experiencing. That will be naturally reflected in our policies. Two, it has encouraged us to think together on long-term challenges, especially in the Indo-Pacific. And three, it has energized our collaborative endeavors to build what is emerging as a key bilateral relationship of our times. Thank you. We'll now turn to questions. We'll take four questions, alternating two questions per delegation. We'll start with Rosalind Jordan of Al Jazeera English. Ministers, secretaries, uh, thank you. Keeping in so, just as Acharya has talked about that, that our close friends and our good bandhan ke baare mein baat kiye, to sabse pehle ek prashna mera sector ke liye mujhe kya ye dik mushkil? That India has yet to condemn Russia's invasion. What more can the U.S. do to persuade India to make what some would argue is a symbolic step, but still a critical one? And there are a number of reports suggesting that Moscow and Delhi are trying to work out some sort of currency exchange for future energy purchases. Did you tell Secretary Jai Shankar that these could risk violations of not just current sanctions, but also risk violating CATSA? Secretary Austin. 
This is a larger policy question. Has the U.S. missed an opportunity in the past 17 years since the beginning of this strategic partnership to replace Moscow as Delhi's choice for weapons, for military materiel, not just the training and the robust partnership that we see in the military sphere. And finally, for the ministers, Jai Shankar and Singh, why not condemn Russia's invasion? Wouldn't this best reflect India's foreign policy goals and international standing? And what is the leverage that the Indian government has to persuade Vladimir Putin that the carnage that we are seeing every day simply must not stop, that it's not helping the Ukrainian people, and that it's not helping the Russian people. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm happy to start. I applaud the multi-part, multi-person question. Um, a few things. Uh, first, I should note, uh, before getting into the specifics of the question, that uh, Prime Minister Modi, President Biden, had a very warm and productive uh, conversation today in their, in their virtual summit. Uh, covered a lot of ground, including some of the things that we mentioned, COVID-19, uh, climate, um, strengthening the, the global economy, a free and open Indo-Pacific that uh, we both aspire to. On Russia-Ukraine, uh, they talked about ways of mitigating the profound impact that this is having on uh, global food supplies and, uh, and prices, uh, commodity markets, and working together to achieve that. Um, I would note, India has made very strong statements uh, in New York at the UN, uh, the minister uh, before the, uh, uh, the Indian parliament, condemning uh, the killing of civilians in, uh, in Ukraine, calling for an independent investigation uh, of uh, these uh, atrocities. Uh, and I would also note that uh, India is providing significant humanitarian assistance to uh, the people of Ukraine, uh, notably uh, medicines, which uh, are very necessary and in real demand. India has to make its own decisions uh, about how it approaches this, uh, this challenge. Uh, we, as a general proposition, are consulting with all of our uh, allies and partners on the consequences of Putin's war, the atrocities being committed against the people uh, of Ukraine. In our judgment, it is important that all countries, especially those with leverage, press Putin to end the war. Uh, and it's also important that democracies stand together and speak uh, with uh, one voice to defend the values that, uh, that we share. And we do share profoundly uh, the, the values of freedom, uh, openness, uh, independence, sovereignty. And those values need to apply everywhere. Um, India's relationship with Russia uh, was developed over decades at a time when the United States was not able to be a partner to India. Times have changed. Uh, today, we are able and willing to be a partner of choice uh, with India across virtually uh, every realm, commerce, technology, uh, education, and security. Uh, and that was very much the nature of the conversation uh, that, uh, that we had today. Uh, when it comes to um, uh, oil purchases, sanctions, et cetera. I just note that there are carve-outs uh, for energy purchases. Of course, we're encouraging uh, countries not to uh, purchase additional uh, energy supplies from, from Russia. Every country is differently situated, uh, has different needs, uh, uh, requirements, um, but uh, we're looking to uh, allies and partners not to increase their, their purchases of, uh, of Russian energy. Well, thanks, Roz. I Regarding uh, missed opportunities, of course, I can't say much about policy decisions that were made before my time. But what I can tell you is that President Biden truly values uh, strong alliances and partnerships, uh, like the one that we have with India. And that's really what today is all about. It's about uh, taking a strong uh, relationship and making it even stronger, and, and working on those things that create interoperability uh, and allow us to, uh, to work together uh, to promote the things that all of us have, have talked about. Uh, the, the, the issue of values is, is, is central to our, uh, this relationship, and we'll continue to work to, uh, to strengthen what's a very strong relationship, and so that we don't miss any opportunities going forward. So, thanks. Uh, I think I probably answer for both of us. 
so uh, first of all, uh, thank you for the advice and suggestions in your question. Uh, I prefer to do it my way and articulate it my way. Now, uh, as Secretary Blinken has pointed out, we have made uh, a number of statements which outline our position uh, in the UN, in our parliament, and in other forums. And briefly, uh, what those positions state is that we are against the conflict, we are for dialogue and diplomacy, uh, we are for uh, urgent cessation of violence, uh, and we are prepared to contribute in whatever way to these objectives. Uh, I noticed you refer to oil purchases. Uh, if you are looking at energy purchases from Russia, I would suggest that your attention should be focused on Europe, which probably uh, we do buy some uh, uh, energy which is necessary for our energy security. But I suspect looking at the figures, probably uh, our total purchases for the month would be less than what Europe does in an afternoon. So you might want to think about it. We'll turn to Lalit Jha, press, press of India. Uh, do I need to repeat? Okay. Uh, Mr. Jashankar, uh, in your remarks, uh, my second question is to uh, Secretary Blinken and uh, Secretary Austin. India, being in a tough neighborhood, is seeking to diversify its energy and military needs. As Prime Minister Modi says, the final goal is Atmanabha Bharat, which mean, also means uh, self-reliant India, and this includes energy independence. You know, U.S. has played a key role in India getting food security through Green Revolution. Uh, in that context, uh, my question to both of you is, what the United States is offering to help India achieve this goal in the field of both energy and military? Thank you. Uh, so if I could respond to the first question, uh, what are we doing to mitigate volatility and unpredictability that the world is currently experiencing? Well, let me start, you know, there are a number of things which are happening in the world. Let me start with the Ukraine uh, situation. I think uh, part of what we are doing is to press for a cessation of hostilities, which I think everybody would agree would uh, mitigate matters and uh, clearly uh, make the world uh, less unpredictable. Uh, we are also uh, addressing the humanitarian situation. Uh, in fact, we have, uh, the Ukrainians have been in touch with us for, especially for the supply of medicines. Uh, we have already provided uh, humanitarian relief to Ukraine, to some of the neighbors, and even as we speak, uh, a shipment of medicines is being delivered or will be delivered very soon uh, to Kiev. Uh, we have uh, discussed uh, the economic consequences as well. I mean, we are looking at it ourselves, but we've discussed it as partners. Uh, I think a big concern we have, and not just we, I think the world has, is of energy security, uh, of rising prices, of uh, increasing premiums, of limited supplies. So uh, today you have to understand it is a legitimate concern of countries to ensure their energy security. But an equally big worry which is emerging is of food security. Uh, there are concerns uh, across geographies uh, uh, of, of uh, societies who are importing wheat or sugar or uh, other, other uh, uh, foodstuff uh, out of the conflict region. So we have dis discussed today, uh, uh, not just us, but I think the subject also came up in the virtual summit between Prime Minister Modi and President Biden uh, about what could India do to stabilize the global economic situation. And uh, we are quite uh, willing, and in fact, we've already started responding uh, 
uh, to the need for uh, greater food supplies, especially wheat most of all, but to some degree sugar as well. Uh, we, have, uh, we have, even as we, uh, uh, you know, uh, at this moment, uh, a number of countries uh, are discussing with us uh, the possibility of greater uh, food supplies, including the World Food Program. So that's the Ukraine part of the uh, global situation. But that's not the only problem that we face. I think the COVID has also left us with a lot of uncertainties and a lot of challenges to be addressed. Uh, again, I think part of it is how do you construct more reliable and resilient supply chains? How do you increase trust and transparency? We disc how do we work together on critical and emerging technologies like 5G? Uh, and again, we discussed uh, an Indian initiative called uh, Performance Linked Initiative, which would incentivize manufacturing in India. Uh, and I think it's very much in American interest to support it. We also spoke about how we could work together to help with the global health situation. How do we get a shot in every arm? How do we increase the distribution uh, of vaccines? Uh, and uh, uh, the other issue, again, which has added to global uncertainty is Afghanistan. And how do you stabilize the region? Uh, how do you, again, uh, provide humanitarian assistance? We are, as you know, uh, in the middle of providing 50,000 tons of wheat. How do you deal with the terrorism concerns that the world has in the Security Council, in FATF, et cetera? And I would say, in a way, in terms of mitigating and stabilizing, the Quad itself is a great stabilizer. Uh, so uh, that, too, is part of the contribution we are making towards a better world and making that contribution in large measure through a partnership with the United States. You want to start? Yeah, and so the, the question was, uh, what are we offering uh, to India uh, in support of its uh, defense security, I think was the question. Uh, as you heard in our earlier statements, uh, we're working closely with India on, on a range of priorities uh, to uh, support uh, India's security and its role as a net security provider. Uh, it is a, it's a leader in the region and it actually exports security to, to the region and we're grateful for that. Some of the things that we talked about as we stated in our opening statements, uh, information sharing, uh, deeper cooperation in, in space and in cyberspace, uh, liaison exchanges, uh, continuing to work together uh, uh, more frequently and, and uh, in, uh, in exercises, but also exercises of increasing comple uh, complexity. So we're, we're working with, uh, with India on a number of things, and uh, we think these things will add uh, tremendous value to, to, to the region in terms of security. And on the uh, last part of the question on uh, energy, uh, first let me say what we're seeing across the board is that the Russian ag aggression against Ukraine is having profound impacts not only on the people of Ukraine, the brutalization of the country, but it is having global impacts, including, as we were talking about, on uh, uh, food availability and, and prices and also uh, on energy. And we've seen uh, significant uh, increases in price uh, there as well. Uh, one of the uh, important steps that President Biden took was to proceed with uh, a coordinated release from Strategic Petroleum Reserves uh, that will uh, continue over the next, uh, for the part of the United States over the next six months to ensure that there is adequate energy on world markets, both to have an impact on availability as well as, uh, as, well as on price to deal with the disruptions caused by the Russian aggression. I think if that aggression stops, if the conflict stops, it will have uh, a positive impact both on uh, energy availability and prices as well as on food uh, availability and food prices. More broadly, though, um, India is the third largest consumer of energy in the world. It's a big place, a big market. Um, electricity demand is projected to double by 2030. Uh, We've dramatically increased our own energy trade with India, uh, diversifying its energy sources. Our energy exports to India now total about $11 billion uh, a year. Um, ultimately, uh, the most effective way to satisfy uh, this growth, uh, the needs uh, of the Indian people, the Indian economy, is of course to honor the, the climate goals, the ambitious climate goals 
that uh, India has set, including uh, particularly the expansion of renewables. And again, I point you to the uh, very important commitments that Prime Minister Modi made at the, at the COP26. Um, we are committed for our part to partnering in India's clean energy transition. And this needs to be a partnership. We have a responsibility, uh, a historic responsibility, as well as a current responsibility in trying to make sure that we're helping to make available the um, technology, uh, the financing, the support to help countries make that transition, uh, to adapt, to build resilience uh, in dealing with climate change and making sure that uh, adequate supplies of energy are reaching uh, their people. Uh, there's a long-standing strategic clean energy partnership that is co-led by our Department of, uh, of Energy, the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas in India. That is deepening cooperation on uh, energy efficiency and next generation fuels. Uh, and we have the Quad. We've got a working group on climate that's partnering on green uh, shipping corridors and on green technology. Here at the State Department, our, our own Energy Bureau has done a lot of uh, work, including collaborative studies uh, with Indian researchers on the most economical decarbonization uh, pathways. And finally, I just note our Development Finance Corporation uh, just announced a $500 million loan to First Solar, uh, which will produce solar panel modules in southern India, furthering climate goals, diversifying solar supply chains. So in all these ways and more, we are working both to deal with the impact of uh, the Russian aggression on, uh, on energy, but much more broadly with this co uh, combination of helping uh, India meet its energy needs while advancing together the vital climate agenda that we share. Uh, Nikkei. Thank you very much for taking my question. Uh, to Secretary uh, Brinken, uh, India plans to deploy S-400 missile defense system. Did you discuss this topic with your Indian counterparts today? Do you rule out the possibility of sanctioning India for its acquisition of S-400? Uh, to Secretary uh, Austin, uh, India is trying to diversify its procurement of military equipment and weapons by reducing reliance on Russia and, and, and purchasing more from other countries, including the United States. I'm wondering what steps the Biden administration will take to help India accelerate the diversification effort. Is it an option for the United States to provide financial assistance to India? Uh, to make U.S. systems more affordable. Uh, to Indian uh, Foreign Minister Jashenkar, uh, Russia has more and more aligned with China diplomatically, economically, and militarily. How much are you concerned about their alignment in terms of India's national security? With that concern, do you think India has to reduce reliance on Russia economically and militarily as soon as possible. Thank you. Uh, I'm happy to start. So let me start by saying we, that we continue uh, to urge uh, all countries to avoid major new transactions for Russian weapon systems, uh, particularly in light of what Russia is doing to Ukraine. Uh, we've not yet made a determination regarding potential sanctions or potential waivers under the, the Katzel law. Uh, but to come back to something I said a few moments ago, uh, there is, of course, a long history and a long relationship between India and Russia, uh, including when it comes to, uh, to military equipment. Uh, that relationship uh, took hold uh, many years ago at a time when, as I said, we were not able to be a partner to uh, India. Uh, and again, as I said, we are now both able and willing uh, to be such a partner, to be a security partner of choice for India. That's one of the areas that we discussed in some detail today. On the issue of uh, you know, future systems, uh, we are engaged in active discussions with, uh, with India on how to best support uh, their modernization needs. Uh, and again, as we look at the future, we want to make sure that uh, we maintain the ability to operate together. And so uh, we look forward to those continued discussions. And it also includes a range of options uh, that would make our systems more affordable. So this is work that will continue going forward. And, uh, 
and again, uh, look forward to continuing to have them as a strong and reliable partner. Well, this seems to be my day to get a lot of advice and suggestions from the press, so thank you for joining that. But uh, look, we, we watch what's happening in the world like any country does, and we draw our conclusions and make our assessments. And believe me, we have a decent sense of what is in our interest and know how to protect it and advance it. So, uh, so I, I think uh, part of what has changed is we have more options than we did before. Uh, uh, I will look at us today, we are standing here for a two plus two with a, with a substantial defense collaboration uh, which has happened in the last uh, decade, uh, which we have been discussing how to take forward. And this wasn't an option which was there for 40 years before that. So the world is changing, the world will keep changing. Uh, what we have to do in our profession is to watch it and you know, see how your uh, interests are best uh, advanced in that. And I just want to uh, pick up on, a, on the last, uh, not this question, but the previous question which Secretary Blinken answered on the energy side, which is, you know, given our energy security concerns, again, I, you know, I don't want uh, this whole subject to go off at a, on a sort of a political note. Uh, every country looks at its best options, and I think today, uh, an expanding India-US energy relationship, which, by the way, didn't exist uh, some years ago. Uh, if my uh, memory is right, you are the second largest LNG supplier to India, I think the fourth or the fifth largest crude oil supplier, a big partner in the renewable side, including the agreement which Secretary Blinken just mentioned. So we have, you know, there is so much more going on in the world today. And a large part of it is really to fully explore the opportunities between India and the United States. We'll take a final question from Pranay Upadhyay, uh, AVP News. Hello, ministers. Uh, my first question is directed to the defense ministers. Raksha Mantri ji, first of all, you want to know that in India and America, there is a major defense partnership my first uh, after signing the agreement what is the road map uh, and what is the conversation you've had and from today's uh, age how can the uh, security can be established by india and military supply to countries like pakistan has been used against indian interest so when you say that uh, us is ready to forge greater defense cooperation with india how have you assured India for the greater solidarity and safeguarding the Indian interest? And which are the critical and emerging technologies U.S. is ready to offer India to strengthen the India's defense and security interests? And to Secretary Austin, India's, uh, India's neighborhood right now is going through a deep economic distress, especially in countries like Sri Lanka and other region, uh, other small countries in, in South Asia. How U.S. is trying to cooperate with India to have a great, greater stability in the region uh, as far as the economic stability in the post-COVID world. I'm going to reply to this. And as you said right now, the relationship between US and India, I would like to say that there is a strategic relationship between the two countries and they are strategic partners. And, uh, and I have insisted that uh, India would uh, focus on core development of productions and all the investors should come to India. They are welcome. And because in India, they can uh, develop the make in India because we want to build and make everything in India. Uh, we're proud of the fact that Today, India has in its inventory a number of platforms uh, that have, we believe, and I think uh, my colleagues would, uh, would affirm, that have performed very, very reliably. And, uh, and so today what we talked about was uh, how we're going to increase uh, our sharing of information, uh, how we're going to uh, uh, deepen our cooperation in space and cyberspace. And again, I think, you know, uh, space and cyberspace are two uh, war fighting domains. 
that uh, we want to make sure we continue to develop our own capabilities, but also help our partners to develop capabilities. And, and, uh, and I think you know, those are the types of things that I think will cause us to, uh, uh, to be uh, dominant in any uh, battle space. So, uh, you know, we, we really look forward to developing this relationship uh, uh, a lot more and also continuing to work on, uh, together with our, with our counterparts here, our colleagues uh, in high-end uh, complex uh, operations. And that's how really you strengthen uh, that, uh, that trust uh, and, and, and build on capability. So. And just on the, the challenges facing the region, this was very much uh, a subject of our conversations today and an ongoing conversation. Let me say a couple of things about that. First, we are trying to deal together with uh, a number of the uh, immediate crises that countries are facing uh, around the world, but including in the Indo-Pacific, including some of uh, India's closest neighbors. When it comes to COVID-19, we've been working through the Quad partnership to effectively deliver hundreds of millions of doses of vaccine. We're now deepening our work to make sure that we're getting shots uh, into arms, that we're supporting uh, healthcare workers, uh, and uh, that we are um, building strong uh, supply chains, both for the immediate challenge and, uh, and going forward. Similarly, we talked about this earlier. Uh, we're very focused on the impact that um, the uh, Russian aggression in Ukraine is having on uh, food prices and food availability, and that affects uh, countries in the region as well. Uh, India is looking, um, taking steps and looking at additional steps when it comes to um, making food stocks more uh, widely available. We're uh, doing the same. We're increasing financing to uh, the uh, World Food Program, the Food and Agricultural Organization. We're looking at what we can do to incentivize the increased production of fertilizers so that even as we get beyond this year's crops, as people are thinking about next year's, uh, yields can be sustained and won't decrease, which would further uh, interrupt supply and, uh, and raise prices. So in all these areas, uh, we're collaborating together. Similarly, on, uh, on energy, as we just discussed. More broadly, one of the things that, that we're talking about is an initiative that uh, President Biden uh, will launch in the, uh, in the weeks ahead, the uh, Indo-Pacific Economic Framework. And there, uh, working together with uh, countries in the region, we can have a very positive effect and very positive impact on things like building supply chain resilience in ways that actually benefit the economies of countries uh, uh, in the region. On infrastructure investment, which is so needed and so critical, where India and the United States uh, can work together. On making available green technology as part uh, of that effort. Um, building out global health uh, security and the necessary infrastructure that goes with that. Uh, working together on digital trade, which is increasingly a part of the lives of people in, in all of our countries and has tremendous potential, including in a number of these uh, uh, neighboring countries. So in all these ways and more, we are working not only um, uh, individually, but increasingly we're working together to make sure that um, some of the benefits of the changing economy can be brought to these countries as well as helping them to deal with many of the challenges uh, that we're facing. Mm -hmm.